guys, it's Carrie from Red Curtain Addict, and I'm so excited to have you all join for our first ever Behind the Curtain live stream episode, where together we will meet artists, amazing artists, experience intimate concerts, and connect with artist enthusiasts. So actually, tonight we're going to have our first guest, Megan Cherno who recently made her Broadway debut as Christine Daae in one of my all-time favorite shows, Phantom of the Opera. So I want to invite you actually to put in some questions that you might have on your mind for Megan, maybe about her amazing career or the show, for a chance for it to be answered by Megan herself. Series. I actually got to meet up with Megan soon after she made her debut as Christine, and lucky for us, we got to go backstage of the Majestic Theater to see some of her beautiful costumes, some of those iconic sets, and see some of those secret passages. Before I invite Megan to join us tonight for our first interview, I want to give you a peek of that backstage tour to show you some of the magic behind the stage of Phantom of the Opera. Take a look. Hey guys, it's Carrie from Red Curtain Addict, and today I'm in New York City at the magical Majestic Theater to see an iconic show, The Phantom of the Opera. But before I do that, I'm going to meet up with Megan Percherno. This is her Broadway debut, and I think we're going to get a backstage tour. Let's go see. Megan, oh my gosh, I am so excited Hello. to see you. Hello, good to see you. Congratulations <laughs> on your Broadway debut. What has it been like being in New York City on stage as a fan of the opera? <laughs> um, it's awesome. <laughs> I bet. It's, it's amazing. It's literally everything you could possibly imagine Dream. and not imagine, actually. Even right. more. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, for all those that haven't seen the show, what is something that makes this show iconic? It's the perfect blend of the music, the scenery, and the characters themselves. And the opera and the rock, right? Everything, the rock, the classical music elements, the, the everything, it's, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So I've been a huge fan of Phantom of the Opera, but I've never gotten the chance to go backstage. Do you think we can get a peek today? I think we can. So what's pretty crazy about Christine is she is on stage constantly, and when she's not, she's usually having a team of incredible pros taking her in and out of costumes, and this is where I come when I'm on the side of the stage. I know I'm very lucky, this doesn't always happen, but I am a lucky one and all my costumes are brand new. So here is my wishing dress. You know what I found out? Um, this fabric, there is one place in Scotland that makes this one fabric, and the only reason they make it is for phantoms around the world. How cool are is that? Are you serious? Yeah, so wow. this is the Amnita dress. Um, and this is uh, in Past the Point of No Return. And you know what's funny is actually when I first had it, um, it was so poofed because it was brand new. It was like out oh. here. And I'm too small for that. So they had to literally like <laughs> steam it down. <laughs> so this is my wedding dress. Oh, and look at this. Oh my God, it's really heavy. She's super heavy. Bustle itself is 35 pounds. Just the bustle. <laughs> How do you even breathe in that? Um, you know you do. So you need to head on stage. Soon. I have to go warm up. But and you have someone that's going to take us on the tour for the backstage I tour. I do. Right? Would you like to come here? Yes. Michael, thank you so much for this. You've been working with the Phantom of the Opera show for how yes, many years? For 21 years. Tell us about your role with the Phantom. So I'm the press agent for the show. Anything that the public sees, yep. basically my eyes make sure that it's perfect. I love that. So you know the ins and outs of this I know stage. all the ins and the outs. Okay, what are we going to see first? I want to go right onto the stage and show you the stuff backstage. Let's do it. Let's go. This is incredible. Look at this stage. This is the infamous chandelier. Um, and so it's covered because it, it's revealed in, in right. a dramatic fashion in, in the prologue. Right. But you can see here. Um, all the beads. All the beads. The, oh, I mean, there's 6,000 beads. It weighs a ton. Her name is Ruthie Two. <laughs> Ruthie Two, not Ruthie one. one. Ruthie One lives in London because oh. London was first. Right above our heads, that is the Phantom's organ. <laughs> But see, there's not there's not enough there. room to have everything on the deck, so things have to fly up. <laughs> so this is so there's when the scene the comes, it's about a half an hour into the show. That stuff all comes down and then gets you know um, moved on to the set that one. So here's like a whole truck of Christine's dressing room. Oh my god! The infamous mirror scene where the Phantom first beckons her. This is the boat. 
Oh, the boat. You know, the famous scene when she's going exactly, to the Exactly, down to the lair. I mean, in terms of, in terms of the whole show, it's about 150 people dealing with everything. But that's every, that's all of us. So it's like, you know, it's the, you know, it's also the crew and the front of house people and our, that's crazy. you know, and all of so our guys, supervisors. You clap, you aren't just clapping for the people on stage. There are so many people behind the stage. And you can't even see this, but the giant staircase of Masquerade. Yeah. I bet you can't believe this. It is literally way up here. You can't even see it. Are it's so kidding? high up. And every night they fly it in and kind of, you know, and angle what? it out. So. So we are right now going to go under the stage. This is a view that not many people will get to really? see. So this is yeah. kind this is of a big special. deal. This is great. OK, that is creepy. OK, that's not real. <laughs> OK. <laughs> this is the catwalk for probably the Phantom <laughs> did his thing. OK, so is this actually the floor? Did they have to dig in to get all these in We there? had to excavate because the really? show was so big, it would not fit in the size of the theater, which is a big Broadway theater. So we had to literally dig into the earth to make That's it incredible. deep enough. The candelabra oh. that come up through the stage, wow. right? These are all the candles that in the boat scene. I have to ask, what is one of your favorite things? You know, you've seen this so many different times sure. over the last 20 years. What have you loved about Phantom? The show is completely consistent. Mm. We have a team of people working constantly to make sure that it is the same fresh, beautiful look mm -hmm. from opening night. We're constantly updating it to make sure that it is, it's the best quality without losing the kind of vintage feel that the period piece requires. I love that. So yeah. There you go, guys. You heard it from Megan and Michael themselves who have been in Broadway for 20 years just for the fan of the opera and Megan as her debut. And if you want to see or hear our interview with Megan Puccino about her career and her Broadway debut, make sure to check that out at redcrewnet.com and come to Majestic, put fan of the opera on your New York City bucket list. It is a must. I know. Can you, is it glitchy or like, is it bad? Okay. Okay, Megan, we're about to ready. Hey, Megan. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? It's so, so good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> I'm great. Sorry, my internet's actually a little bit glitchy, but I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to connect with you from from Oklahoma. You're in New York City right now, right? Yes, yes. Hello to the Midwest. <laughs> I know it's crazy to be here. Well, that was such a fun tour that we did together, and it was so fun to see those costumes. How many do you actually wear throughout the show of Phantom of the Opera? Oh, uh, don't quote me, but I think that um, in total I have 14 costume pieces. I might have made that number up, though. So, Sam Fleming, when you see this, you tell me how many. <laughs> <that is. laughs> oh, my gosh. That is amazing. Which one is which one is your favorite? Um, There's close ones. So, Amnita dress, which is the pink fluffy one. Well, like salmon colored. It's in uh, Point of No Return. And then the wedding dress after that. And then Star Princess after that. Oh, they're all so beautiful. I remember that, that wedding dress is so heavy. How do you even breathe when you're singing? <laughs> well, it's more moving than breathing. Breathing, I don't mind. Like, corset is nice because I can, like, sing into it with my ribs. But, like, yeah, right. um, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, I miss it, though. I miss it. I, I can't reckon it. <laughs> I know, I know. And there's so many things that happen backstage, though. Like, I'm sure that there's almost, like, a show happening backstage to make the show on stage happen. Oh, so maybe, what so is crazy back there? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, maybe what's like a backstage phantom secret that you can tell us tonight? Mm, well, secrets I can't tell you, but I can tell you that like you know you have like your little routine that you do, like the little things you do with people, like you shimmy or you like say something softly or like you like there are these little like things you have to do, and if you don't do them, you're like, I don't think I can go on now. <laughs> <laughs> you're like baseball players, like you've got your thing, you've got to do it. So yeah. like, that's that's definitely like you know one thing that like 
whatever you do. So, yeah. It's incredible. It's such a fun show. It's just so iconic. And you are absolutely amazing uh, of, in Christine, as Christine. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, one thing I really love about you, Megan, is you are an artist of all different genres. You actually do opera. You can you do musical theaters. But I'm curious to see, like, what is the rehearsal process how is it different from like a broadway musical to an opera and how are they the same ah well i mean so actually so going into broadway was my first time ever going in as a replacement um even the world tour i built it from the top up with our cast so that's how i'm used to doing it also with opera i'm used to going in starting a show from the bottom up and then doing it when you come into a long-running show on broadway it's not like that, obviously, right. because everyone else is going and you're the newbie that's in. So like, that's definitely a very different kind of rehearsal process. And even then that was an interesting one because I was coming from Phantom already, which was close to, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost, it's pretty close to the New York stage one. So um, even that, but, but you know, there's nuances and such. So um, it's kind of like you do it on your own. Uh, yeah opposed to like with the whole cast, which is fascinating, but that's the biggest difference. And also, um, generally speaking with how I've experienced things is the rehearsal process for music theater is much longer than ah, interesting. And, yeah, and that's actually really amazing because then you can really live into things, learn things, evolve as a cast, as opposed to opera, it's so quick that, you know, I mean, in the opera world, you come fully memorized, ready to go. In the in the right. music theater world, from my experience, I come with that way because I'm from the opera world. But generally, they're kind of learning their music as a group, which yeah. there's something to be said about that. I mean, that being said, too, though, once you're off book, you're off book. So you should really kind of know the music before you get into a Broadway show. But um, by learning it together, you kind of... Uh, develop together and you you learn things together and there's something very special about that in communal as opposed to like when you come in into an opera it's like here's my stuff i'm ready to go let's go <laughs> so, yeah yeah absolutely and, and it's fun to like sit within the role a little bit longer right sometimes the operas they don't run as long it's maybe a week here or a month long show so i'm sure you got to really un get to know Christine. Um, oh, fan I mean, like I did for Love Never Dies, I did over 400 performances. And like, that's more than an opera singer would do in a career of one role. You know what I mean? So like, there's something very special about that because yeah, you can really evolve. And it's so funny, like when I was in Candide, we did 10 performances and extended. And for me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a long run. Yeah. From Broadway, we're like, this is so short. And now that I'm in the music theater world as well, I understand it because I mean, I've been living in Christine, the younger version in Phantom now for over a year. And like, yeah, I mean, I don't know what show I'm on now, like 200 something, which for some is nothing. So, but, but you know, so it's, it's interesting. So crazy. Okay, so for all those that are tuning in tonight, for those that don't know about Love Never Dies, uh, tell us a little bit about that because I didn't realize it was a thing until uh, recently when we met a few years ago, but it was like, it's an amazing, amazing show. Oh, it's incredible. So, I mean, it's the sequel to Phantom, but it's also a very much standalone piece by itself. I mean, like the music is absolutely gorgeous i mean andrew lord weber himself has said it's probably some of the most beautiful music he's ever written and it is just stunning and the sets and the, the scenery the costumes i mean it's just gorgeous and we actually premiered it in the united states uh two years ago so mm -hmm. ago, some, i don't know i'm losing all the time in quarantine right now <laughs> um, but yeah so and what was really cool is so for the first time ever live we toured around the United States and we went to 41 states, I think. Wow. And, um, and it was sold out in almost every performance. It was amazing. It was really cool. It was really that's neat. Amazing. Yeah, I, that's actually kind of how we met was when you came yeah. here to say and you were doing Love Never Dies and I was obsessed with the show. I had seen it on one of our local movie theaters um, and was like, oh my gosh, it's finally coming. So it was really excited to, to see you. Oh yeah, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous show. And ours is based on the Australian production. So yeah. it's very, very different than when uh, it's first 
incarnation in London. It's it's not that show anymore. It's it's mm-hmm. it's more like uh, Australia, and it's it's just stunning. Like it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is stunning. And I want to talk about the musical piece, like the the music of it, of Phantom of the Opera, and even Love Never Dies. I think like a lot of people may consider or say like, oh yeah, Phantom of the Opera is an opera, but it's technically not. But I I, I don't know fully how to explain that. I was wondering if you could explain that to our viewers tonight. Oh, sure. I mean, so Phantom lives in a fascinating world. It's it's not an opera, but it's it's sung through aside from like very, very, very little speaking. Mm-hmm. And so and the style itself is like classic rock and opera came and had a baby. Mm-hmm. And it's it's amazing because you really do feel like you're at a rock concert. In fact, Andrew himself was just in town here in New York and met with us. And he's like, you got to remember, this is like a rock concert. Yeah. So. Yes, there's organ and there's very classical elements to it, but it's edgy. There's something different, especially now, like they're modernizing it a little bit now. And it's a little Mm -hmm. bit more fierce and edgy, which I like. Um, And um, but it's it's not an opera. But indeed, though, it's I mean, it is a sing. And like, thank goodness I have the classical training I have because like it is a hard, hard thing to do every night. Yeah. (laughs) do it justice because like the music is so gorgeous and I personally think that one of Andrew's biggest strengths is he's such a storyteller and like to really really do his music justice you'd need to have all these different colors and to be able to tell that story Mm -hmm. and um, so in that way it's very much like an opera and also it's the longest running show on both both West End and Broadway so there's a tradition to it and that I also find very uh similar to opera because you know it's how many people have played violetta how many people have played olympia or queen of the night well how you know i think i'm again i'm throwing these numbers out but fake news someone find out the real facts i don't know but like i think i'm number 23 christine on broadway um we just celebrated our 32nd birthday in january and i mean there's really quite a tradition and uh respect that you have for this iconic piece so That's amazing. And I want to talk about that because to be able to work with Andrew Lloyd Webber in a, such an iconic role, you know, it's, what has it been like to, was it, you know, a lot of pressure to work with him or did you, what kind of things have you learned from him being Christine for such a long period of time? Oh, so much. I mean, he is obviously a genius. I think it goes without saying. Um, but I mean, particularly Love Never Dies. That's when I first was introduced to Andrew Lloyd Webber. And he came and he worked with us before we opened, you know, and did the premiere of it in the U.S. in, in Detroit. And that was amazing, you know. And because I was the first one to do it in the United States, that was a very different experience than um, going back in time as it was to my younger self in, as Christine and Phantom. And so it was just right. incredible to get to work with him and coach with him on these pieces. And like, you know, he also kind of gave his blessing of like, you, you can make this kind of your own. No one has done it here. And so like, again, there's, you have to do it within the constraints of the show and his music and style, but that was amazing. And then you go to Phantom where I went back in time and that was also an incredible experience because again, I built it from the ground up with the rest of our cast. So you had all the New York team out. Um, Kristen Blodgett is one of my mentors and she's just incredible. And, you know, so you're learning from the best, the pros. Um, so then you do the world tour and then I come into New York and then I'm working with, you know, David Caddick, David Lai, Seth. I mean, Amazing. they can't learn it from any better people. They are the people to learn it from. And then Andrew came in and watched it. And of course, look, this is a huge responsibility. I mean, everybody, almost everybody knows mm-hmm. Phantom of the Opera and Christine Daae. So I don't take it lightly. Um, mm-hmm. It's a huge responsibility, but it's also amazing because like you get to join the line of these incredible actors uh, who have also upheld this incredible tradition. And so many people come after the show and they're like, oh, this was my first Broadway show or this oh, is my first cool. show. And like, you know that you're passing on this tradition to the next generation. It's yeah. really amazing. So I, t- I, d- I didn't totally l- answer your question, but working with Andrew is awesome. <laughs> so, I bet. Yeah. I bet. What a fun, fun time. I, since you've, you know, you've done Love Never Dies, you've done the world tour, and now, you know, you, you're doing this Broadway amazing show. What's something that you love about this Broadway experience? Oh, my gosh. Um, 
Broadway is definitely its own own thing. Like everything is its own bird. And I, I love Broadway. I mean, I my it. colleagues that I work with are just incredible. I mean, it's really inspiring to be on stage. I'm learning. I learn so much. I mean, like every production I'm in, I learn a lot. But um, definitely on Broadway, it's its own animal. Mm -hmm. um, you, I mean, no matter what, you work hard. And like there is a glamorous side of it. And there's also a nitty gritty side, you know? I mean, yeah. On the world tour, we had breaks, like, because it has to move from country to country. So, like, occasionally we'd have like two weeks off, a month off. But aside from now, which is unheard of, um, it doesn't stop. So, like, you have to pace yourself in a very different manner as opposed to when you know a break is coming up. Um, also, uh, the stage itself is a little different than on the world tour. The world tour, it's wood. Here, it's metal. You know, there's trap doors here. There's pyro mm -hmm. here. I mean, there's so many, the stakes are so much higher here, I think, on Broadway. Um, but also, like, it's just, I, I love the people I work with. I mean, and also, that was an interesting thing, too. I mean, I was the newbie. So, like, I was new girl on campus, <laughs> as opposed to, like, everybody's the newbie. Wow. The show. And, like, there, there are people in the ensemble. We just had an ensemble member who retired after 25 years being in the show. I mean, like. <laughs> you're just like oh my wow. god this is amazing. But the show is older than I am <laughs> so like it's just yeah. incredible and, um, so I'm just learning a lot and like I love how um everyone's really uh supportive like when I came in like you don't know how it's going to be right and like everyone just open arms you're really a family like in fact we all um we all had a zoom uh, session together last oh, year. Oh, so cool. Yeah, well, someone, we lost someone in our cat, our, our company to oh, COVID. Oh, gosh. It was really beautiful. I mean, we did a, a candlelight vigil, and, um, you know, I mean, like, no one's going to be without something like that. And just seeing everyone, like, after, this is actually today marks one month that the Broadway shutdown has happened. And wow. just seeing everybody, you realize how much of a family you really are. And like, mm -hmm. you can't wait to be back with these people. Like these people you see every single day of your life. And Absolutely. like, so yeah, I miss them. I miss you guys. Oh no, we miss you, but we're excited oh. to see you here and, and see your beautiful face and, and talk to you about these shows. I actually have some questions coming through from some of the viewers I wanted to ask. Sure. Um, and, and pull these out. So this is from Callista Gloss. And she wants to know, Megan, which Christine do you identify more with? The younger Christine in Phantom of the Opera or the more mature Christine in Love Never Dies? Okay, I'm actually going to like sort of skirt around that question and say, I would say Act 2 Christine of Phantom and Love Never Dies merged together. Act 2 of Phantom and Love Never Dies. Oh, so like the in-between? Like the... Like well, the, I'm more on the love never dies side of the strength, but like she finds her strength as young Christine in act two more and, yep. and she takes it and she really starts becoming herself. So I really identify with act two Christine of Phantom. But then I also mm -hmm. identify with aspects of her more mature self in love never dies. You know, yeah. like, you know, she, I mean, like I'm not a 17 year old, let's face it. Like, you know, like, I mean, I've, I've experienced a bit of life. And yeah. so I identify also on that side of it as well. So I would say those two together. Hey, I like that answer. That's a good one. <laughs> I have another one here from Paige. She says, who inspired you to become a stage actress? And would you rather Christine to be with Phantom or Raul in the first place and why? Ah, uh, okay. So, um, number one, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> literally, it's like I was bitten by a bug and it just happened. But I'm an odd bird. Like, I don't know. I just was like, I'm going to do this now. And then I was like, must do this now. <laughs> <laughs> really, actually, someone that was like one particular person that I was like, oh my gosh, this is my, yes, no. I mean, I, I, I don't have that. Um, but, um, well, first of all, I'm team Christine. So I think she should have picked herself, but there's no way that can happen. And we have to remember, like, this is a period piece. Like, right. so she can't pick herself. Um, well, she can, but she's still, you know what I mean. So yeah. here's the deal though. I am team Phantom. <laughs> I'm actually not team Rel. You're right. you. I feel like, um, on a soul level, there's something there. And like, had society not turned him into the monster that he 
actually isn't, but had become. Because, I mean, think about it. Like, if he was accepted into society, he wouldn't be hiding in a basement and having, like, a completely, like, warped sense of reality and, you know, all this this hate towards him, you know? I mean, he's, yeah. he's a genius. And so if he would have not been disfigured, they would have been together. But, like, society made him who he was, who he is. And so I think truly on a soul level, um, it's it's Phantom who she picks. Mm -hmm. Like it's the music. There's a connection there that Raul and her will never have. And yeah. they have it. And I think we all know what that's like to have that primal pull to someone, whether it's right or wrong. I mean, you know, you can't fake that. I mean, that's it's it's just a complete it, there's another level that's going on there. So Team Phantom here. Team Phantom. So I was thinking about this question when I saw it, and I was like, man, it, it's funny how you go back and forth from like, oh, well, you know, Raul's really cute. You know, he 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 really loves her. He's charming. But then, like the Phantom, there's something about like a deeper spiritual connection that exactly. You know, that's, well, that's what I personally think. Not every Christine will uh, agree with me, okay. but I think Team Phantom, Christine. But okay. I also think a little more edgy and warped and like dark. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love you, Megan. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's true, though. It's like, well, you want the phantom to be, you want it from, but sometimes you're like, God, he's a little off. Like, he's just a little obsessive. And you wonder, like, what that is. But it's this passion, this love for the music of the night, right? Which is so special, which is really Well, cool. and there's a childlike manner to him as well. He doesn't know. I mean, it's not an excuse for killing people, but he doesn't know. There's a petulant child. There's a... There's such a need and want for love that he never experienced before. And then suddenly he has this person, Christine, showing him firsthand what it's like to be loved. And yeah. that changes everything. So, such a good show, you guys. I mean, oh, it's such a good show. It's a yeah. like, So, oh, I can't wait to be back in it. <laughs> I know, it never really ever gets old. So, tell me, you know, now that the theaters are in pause and, you know, we're kind of going through this shift, what have you been up to? Well, I mean, it depends. I've been I've been really trying to keep myself busy and like have some kind of structure. I mean, I'm if you haven't told you can't tell I'm an extrovert. So I'm going to be honest, guys, check on your extrovert friends because I'm I'm like, not OK sometimes. And like I have mostly up days. And then to be very honest, I have some down days. I mean, I have a favorite tree that I talk to now on walks. Oh, like That's yeah. where we're at mentally. <laughs> like, I mean, I, like, I um. I sing, like I, I brought my score home um, of Phantom. So like I review it, I look at it and um, I'm, you know, like watching so much Netflix. Oh my God, Tiger King. I don't even want to get into it. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. It, just, um, it makes me so sad because here I am. I'm actually in Oklahoma right now. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> not yeah. Oh my God. No, but I'm on um, like, the really the positive side of this is I'm really connecting a lot with, um, so many people, you know, I mean, thank goodness that uh, I'm lucky to have technology. I know not everyone is, but, you know, like, really, it's amazing how much we've all, like, really been there for each other as, as much mm -hmm. as we can. And, um, you know, I, I think a fascinating thing about this, too, life is a lot slower now for me. And, um, you know, like, I, I go out with my mask and everything to take my daily walk. And, um, you know, the beauty of nature and just kind of appreciating things. Like I, I'm totally one of those people that like I wake up, I meditate, and I, I I'm, I'm a journaler now. I journal and like I write things I'm, I'm yeah. grateful for. And I think it's interesting as I, as I even started looking at what I'm grateful for and like the things I'm grateful now, I probably would have taken complete, uh, for granted back when like normal life was happening. And now, now I'm realizing mm -hmm. I think, like when all of this insanity is done, we're going to really, I hope, understand as a species, like what we really can be grateful for. And like, yeah. it's, it's simple things too, and really beautiful things that maybe get glossed over when we're so focused. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm trying, I'm doing music, you know, like Instagram lives, like a thank goodness, like I have buddies that are like out in Korea and, you know, the UK and Hawaii and everywhere. And so to you know, be able to do that and connect and, um, just trying to stay sane. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's this, it's a, it's interesting to slow down, right? It helps you, it makes you reflect. And I think that that's really what's happening overall, um, around all the world is yeah. really fascinating. Um, so how you it sounds like you've been keeping up with some of the fandom cast. What are they saying? What are you 
Are you guys going to do something fun, maybe on Instagram together as a group? Oh, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was a delicate time, you know. And, like, I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade. I mean, collectively, right. everyone, this is a traumatic experience. Um, and it's only going to get harder as time, more challenging as time goes on. So I think we're all kind of feeling it and dealing with it in our own way. But collectively, there is that feeling of, like, I can't wait for things to go back to normal, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we miss each other, like any, everyone, you know, like you want, oh my God, I can't wait to hug people. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Exactly. Like, I just want to be like, oh, okay. so, um, you know, that, and, and like we, a lot of us keep talking about like that first rehearsal back, that mm -hmm. first performance, like I, I visualize it and I see it whenever that's going to be like, I cannot wait. Like it's going to be so emotional and special yeah. because like, something and that's that's almost something strangely like look we all know that we're extremely privileged to be able to be on broadway and on a broader scale to be performing as as wherever you are i mean that's really a privilege yeah. but like, to have it taken away on a global scale i mean like art is really the soul and fiber of humanity and now it's gone at least in the live sense yeah and it's it's like there's part of my soul that's missing and i can't yeah. really get that back and I can't wait to share it. Like part of it too is like the sharing with everyone. And then also just, yeah, that, oh, that first performance, I just think about it constantly and I can't wait for it. It's gonna be amazing. It's, you know, yeah, I, I consider it on pause because I think, you know, it's gonna come back. All the theaters are gonna be alive again and we're gonna be in those theater seats to see it. But I think what's fascinating is all this live stream things that are happening where I can see concerts. Now I think Andrew Lloyd Webber is gonna be doing um, some of the his shows every Friday that you can see. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Like I saw Joseph last week and he yeah. this Sunday and yeah. Friday. And Friday. Um, yes. So yeah. it's, I think it's really interesting. And now, like, when you couldn't access a lot of these things before, now you can. And so there's some positives that are coming from this, too. And I wonder, you know, when everything kind of gets back to normal, I hope that that continues so that people can watch – musical theater in their home, but also go to see you live in New York. Yeah, I hope there's a blend. I mean, look, we're all pivoting and finding whatever the new normal is. And, you know, I we are sharing things. And I, I mean, like, I think that's why, too, it's so important, you know, like people are turning to artists at this time. If you're watching Netflix, you're turning to artists. Like yeah. those, those are actors. So like, yeah. you know, unless you're doing nothing or reading a book, I mean, like everything that people are trying to do, they're turning to actors still. So, yeah. you know, there's something very special about it. So true. And speaking of sharing, I hear that you're actually um, doing some virtual live lessons with people. Tell us about that. Yes. So um, I am opening my studio. I have a voice studio, but I'm opening it now a little bit further since I have a little extra time to virtual uh, voice lessons. So um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to post like an, a, I've been saying it and people are like, oh my gosh, do you do it? But yes, I, I will post like an actual thing on like where to contact me, et cetera. And like, you know, consultations, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and yeah, cause you know what? I mean, the good thing now about having more time is I can also share all the knowledge that I've been given by some of the greatest minds and pass it along. You know, like that's how this, that's how this works. You know, like you get information and it's, I think it's your job to share it then out there with people and spread it. So absolutely, absolutely. Megan, you're just the best. It's always good just to see oh, you. It's so great to see you. And chat with you. And I just I cannot wait to see you again on the in the stage of Fan of the Opera. It's just gonna be incredible. So oh, it's gonna be so amazing. <laughs> absolutely. And everybody who's watching, make sure to follow Megan on Instagram. All of her stories are so much fun. And then you can find <laughs> out soon about your your live lessons i think i might have to take you up that, on that megan that'd be kind of fun we should do that <laughs> exactly um, well, thanks for having me thank you thank you guys for tuning in and it's been a pleasure we're going to be announcing our next guest soon so make sure to check it out at redcurtainaddict.com until next time